You know, some light too. You know the vibes. Uh. Said it's Kiko Bang, yeah, big gob, know the north side, be where we lie. Pulling up with them drilling niggas, them villain niggas, risking me the time. Hey, the niggas that I call my brothers, know they'll stand with me on any line. We're gonna talk about. So a couple of neighborhoods in Southern California. Now, when I first heard about Latin Kings in Southern California, you know, I knew I'm familiar with Latin Kings when it comes to Chicago, you know, Kingsism. You know, I did small studies on that neighborhood and that gang or whatever there are, the organization, that movement. And then I was busted with one, but he wasn't really too involved heavy. He didn't preach it like how he did when he was active, but he was on the SNY. So let's talk about, let's go back to 1976. We're talking about a chapter that got established in Whittier, Latin Kings Whittier. It was actually by two Chicago brothers who left Chicago, came out to California and established their own chapter, started recruiting. They weren't under the 13. They, you know, obviously we all know Latin Kings, you know, certain certain aspects of it, you know, their rival enemies are the Mexican Mafia. So there were just Latin King members starting a chapter in California to branch out to become one big nation, the nation. And that's how A Street Latin King started. Because them projects before A Street, there was a lot of projects right there. But it was divided between White Fence, uh, v and &E, and 18th Street. So it was divided in a lot of sections. But actually these brothers were the ones that went to Bull Heights and took over these particular projects that I'm showing you across the screen. This is one of the biggest projects in Southern California that's been taken over by Latin Kings A Street and the whole Latin Kings faction down there. And what's crazy is that as the Latin King brothers were recruiting members from what I gathered, actually went to war with 18th Street, took out one of the main dudes, took him out through this whole gang war for these projects, and then the rest of the 18th Street members left. Then they said they wind up pushing white fence over the wall, got rid of VNE, Vario Nueva Estrada, and took it over. And it became A Street Latin Kings. And then during that time, the branch off happened even more. You had Southside Latin Kings 13, Eastside Latin Kings, Pasadena Latin Kings, as you see across the screen, they actually were created separately, not by A Street Latin Kings. They were created separately. They obviously they have their own story, their own history, but all these Latin King cliques are all together. They all recognize each other as kings, even though the the two brothers got busted for robberies and got extradited back to Chicago, never returned. I mean, they left their thumbprint, they left their stamp in, in Southern California. So what happened was for a very long time, these cliques were just Latin King cliques, and then. Guess who scooped in and took them over? Obviously, the Mexican Mafia wanted every gang, every neighborhood imaginable under their umbrella. So these gangs adopted the 13, became Southsiders, some to even hit the penal system and become Sureños. But now, the purpose of this video is that one of these Latin King members from one of these cliques, specifically 8th Street, became a Mexican Mafia member. His name is Smiley. And it was because I found out a story about Smiley mentioned him in one of my videos that I was going to tell the story is when people came forward to tell me about the whole history of Latin Kings and how they were established in Southern California. And they described the Latin Kings as one of the most hated cliques in Southern California for what they represent. Because when you go to the feds, you know, sometimes you have to choose a side. You can either be Latin Kings 13 or you can actually run with the nations, the bloodline. In reality, a lot of these Latin King members in Southern California still have strong ties and great connections, great communication with the Latin Kings of Chicago. Yeah, I guess you could say the one, the Latin Kings from Chicago kind of look at the ones from Southern California since they run with the Sureños and the Mexican Mafia a certain way. And there's been a lot of disrespect. There's been a lot of confusion. There's been a lot of turmoil, a lot of bumping heads and beef. But a lot of people have been able to establish and look past that and recognize that they're all kings. Just one pick the southerners, the other ones are beefing with everybody else in Chicago. East Coast beef. As I was saying, they said the big homies had a lot to do with Pasadena Latin Kings coming together, becoming the big clique, representing the 13. But like I said, they were created separately. They have their own history. So finally, Smiley from A Street. But he's a Mexican Mafia member. He's made. He's in the penal system. He's very young, and when they when I when they describe to me young, I'm thinking like mid 30s, early 30s, probably close to the 40s. He's young, ambitious, but he did something that's a trip that was intriguing, and I want to share with you guys. 
So he all you got all these Latin King clicks. Well, a majority of them. There's a couple that don't. They're like the ones in Santa. I think in Anaheim, I believe it is called Folks, family of Latin Kings. He don't want no part of them. They're not even considered Latin Kings as as like as opposed to the rest. But what happened was is that he came up as a Latin King member. You know, he got his membership into the Mexican Mafia. And what he did was, instead of fighting for all these territories like the rest of these Mexican Mafias do, over this turf, that turf, and having different little sections in all these different cities, he took over Latin Kings. How did he take over Latin Kings? Is The Mexican Mafia considered it and deemed it his birthright. That's what he earned. That he got that coming. He's a Latin King member, came up as a Latin King member, earned his membership as a Latin King gang member. So what he wanted to do was unite all the Latin King cliques together under one umbrella. See, a lot of these Latin King groups were answering to different Mexican Mafia members. So it kept all these cliques divided. Even though they represent themselves as Latin Kings, they all know their kings to one another. When you got one clique of Latin Kings answering to one Mexican Mafia member and another Latin King clique answering to another Mexican Mafia member and those two Mexican Mafia members can't seem to get, get along and bump heads. Cause these two Latin King member cliques to beef and bump heads, go at it, rob each other, shoot each other. When they all believe that they're under the one nation, they're under the Latin King crown. They're all kings. So Smiley decided to say, this is what I want. Instead of fighting for Pasadena, instead of fighting for Pomona or Clover City, other cities like these other guys do, I want all the kings united as one under me. And he crowned himself the true king. So when I found that out, I was like, all right, so Pasadena land kings are pretty deep. From the research that I've done, very deep. A Street's big. They got one of the biggest projects in Southern California. And all these different Latin King vaudios are all deep with a lot of members. And they were divided because different Mexican Mafia members were claiming ownership on different territories. All these Latin King gang members resided. This man decided to say, I'm a Latin King member. I want all my Latin Kings answering to me.